Oh, yeah, but I want to I wanna listen to yeah, having Europe, you know. Oh, you haven't been to Europe? No. Ever? No. You have to go this summer. I think that's your homework. Oh. oh my gosh, you're the best teacher ever. Of course, I'm not giving you any money. Today, right? yeah. <laughs> you just do it on your own. Yeah. And if you don't. Italy. Yeah. Italy is. Oh, yeah. My boyfriend's coming in from Italy. So, yeah. It's so sweet. Yeah. Does he speak Italian? No. His, his grandparents never taught their parents because they moved here and, you know, the same thing. Yeah. Yep. I wish he would, because he would understand Spanish. Then, you know, that would be cool. Yeah, you'd probably be just fine if you understand Yeah. Yeah, I think I understand more than him. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're going to have an intimate session, right? <laughs> we only have like four people today. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and we have two guest speakers. Vicky is going to be uh, with us today. You have uh, Vicky right there. And she's going to be talking about proctoring services and how to do, uh, create like um, tests online and doing like the batch um, insert that she does. Like you create everything in a Word document and then uh, upload it to uh, Blackboard. And Walter's going to be here also around 4, and he's going to be talking about the Respondus Lockdown Browser and how to get your gradebook set up. Um, so, now, by the way, I wanted to ask you, um, how was, what do you think about the lunch meeting, the working meeting? Oh, you weren't here, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, only two people here, uh, Dr. Ellard and... I wasn't really ready for it. Yeah. I, I wasn't that far along. Yeah. And uh, I still am, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. W would it be something helpful, like, if we do it again? Or you rather just, you know, do it on your own? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know. What? In my contagion, I should have yeah. just done it here. When I was yeah. the room, the door was closed and I didn't have any help then. Yes. And then I, I was just, I, it really didn't go well. Then. Yeah. I kept trying some things. So it would be better like a one on one and just, or, or you I just to come. The, it was too sterile. I was like, actually, I do a lot of mine with the door open. Sometimes I close mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But it just, you know, it just makes it more natural. So. Yeah. Um, and it locked up the laptop. Mm -hmm. So we think that I'm sure a desktop will be better. Yeah. But it yeah. Ran, out of, ran out of space really quick. Yeah. Because of the movie, probably. That's usually what it is. Huh. Yeah, never had. So I think maybe just the, the laptop. Yeah. So I maybe better just to do it in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to try it. In this it. room, yeah. Yeah. Where we have and I also, um, we also send the laptops to IT so they can clean them up and make them yeah. faster. Uh, but we can we can try the desktop. I know I'm sure it's going to be better. At least, but at least I was telling them just. 30 second practice or a minute practice, then if you're confident, yeah. you want to do something longer. Exactly. But, but it was just that practice. Of yeah. Practice. And you can always like uh, pause it and then go again and keep going and, you yeah. know, because. It was just, it was too new. Uh, you know, the, the video wasn't displaying, it wasn't intuitive at all. Mm -hmm. So once I did it, I thought I'd see it there. Okay, I got it. Right. So it, it, that was, I was really lost. Yeah. You know, I've used one of those similar software. Mm -hmm. You start over, you realize you just need somebody babying you through every step. Yeah, for Mac it's different because my the Camtasia that I have on my laptop, I can see my like if I use the, the little camera, yeah. I can see myself and and all that. And that's why it was confusing for you because you didn't see that camera, uh, you didn't see if it was actually recording you, I right? I, I think I might have saw it, but then when we hit the end, it, it didn't appear anywhere. So yeah, on. yeah, because so you had you had to produce it and then it would yeah, appear so in the yeah. I needed I needed to send it. Yeah, okay. Well, um, also I wanted to know where are you in the development process of your courses? Got my soldiers done. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. yeah. 
And I decided kind of in the middle of things to mm -hmm. use um, the My Arts Lab that goes with uh -huh. Facebook. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I'm, that led into a whole another decision-making process yeah. of what to use and yeah. what not to use and um, mm -hmm. what I should do on Blackboard. And um, yeah. so I, it just delayed things. Yeah. yeah. The good thing is like you, even though we want you to have everything done by the end of this course, you're not teaching till 2015. Well, I decided to prepare for summer okay. instead because that's more urgent. Okay. And I'm still and I'm using the the new uh, course material for that anyway. So okay. I kind of switched that also. Right. Okay. So you are teaching this summer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I read everything from the first week, and that's about it. I do come every time. Yes, you do, yes. I do. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't come last time without yeah. this working meeting thing, which actually yeah. I would like to try, um, mm -hmm. but I couldn't, you know, last week was my first day that I could actually yeah. Uh, yeah, take a chill, so I didn't that's come. Cool. But I'd like to try it because I am usually um, good at learning with other people. Okay. You could learn it that way. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so now it turns out too. I will be teaching it till spring 2016. Okay. So yeah, it's even less. Yeah, it's less like pressure on you lots and of yeah. Right now, and that's so yeah. far away. So I, I haven't been on top of it. Okay. Okay. Um, something that Chris Rivera is doing. He's coming here, and we just sit down next to each other. And if it's, if he has any question, I'm here like to answer it. But I'm like working on my own thing. So if you guys like want to do that, that's fine. You know, I'm I'm open for that. Time that he comes, or just whenever? Yeah, I mean, not whenever. We we do like schedule some time when I'm like uh, open. Like I don't have any meetings or anything. And then he comes and we just you know sit in the conference room and. He works, and it's good for him because sometimes he gets stuck, and then he's like, mm -hmm. you know, he can, you know, uh, ask me anything. So, if you want to do that, you let me know. Yeah, so I think I will. Yeah. And for me too, it's, it's bad. It's the help, mm -hmm. but also, um, I just have to schedule things in. Yeah. Because you know, my job's like things are coming at me every single day. Yeah. And you know, everything has to be taken care of right away. Yeah. And so, anything that is mine, that mm -hmm. is honors, is what ends up being pushed. Yeah, pushed, pushed away. Pushed. Yeah. And that's why we're trying to do in this course, sort of like giving giving you a timeline of you know what to do, how to develop the course. But mm -hmm. I know that you have priorities too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that this is not a priority, but your yeah. the, there are things more urgent. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I'm hoping that when yeah. the semester ends, I'll be able to give this some more attention. Yeah. Mr. Jones. Well, I, first of all, I want to thank Laura. I missed the last session. Mm -hmm. uh, I was out of town over spring break, and I yeah. reset all my clocks in my house except for yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so I took off, and I was yeah. right down here, and I looked at my watch, and I thought, I'm going to get there about 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> So well, that's what happened with me. But I, yeah. I have been, I have been work doing a lot of mental work on it. I even went yeah. to a conference, and uh, there I attended a, a, a session and decided my textbook yeah. and the uh, the augmentation materials that, that I'm going to use with that textbook that I can tie in. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's got me a, a lot closer to saying, oh, now I know how it's going to fit together. Yeah. Putting it up and Blackboard's going to be easy. Yeah, yeah, because you, you have experience with Blackboard. Yeah, yeah. and with the new Blackboard, making, too. Yeah, yeah making, making that mental mm -hmm. shift is, uh, uh, is, the, uh, is the difficult part for me. Yeah, okay. Mr. Ellert? Well, I'm working on what I did last time at the workshop, was uh, mm -hmm. working on my welcome video. Yeah. And it goes all the way through uh, how to submit a assignment and then yeah. how to go find comments from it. Yeah. Which is, it is different. It's different. It it's is. Not, not, not much, but it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. I'm using Adobe Captivate and it does this. I have to go back and build spaces mm -hmm. in it because the, the, uh, the audio runs away from the, the video. Oh. So um, what I do is I add little chunks in it and those become like uh, table contents where you can 
jump to them. Mm -hmm. The best mm -hmm. part I am, I just got to do that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm ready to write. Uh, my next steps are actually, I, I filled out week one and ten, and those are the two major divisions I have. Mm -hmm. I use a nine as a spring recess. I've never done that before. Okay. But that's where we split the semester and a half into two distinct software that we teach. Okay. And um, so those are full in our module idea where the lecture videos and the homework are all in a weekly module. Okay. So I got all the other ones built with dates, but there's nothing in them. Okay. Yeah. So I'm ready to do So you that. got the structure of the Blackboard already. Maybe I'm ready to write, write a uh, yeah. course um, modification mm -hmm. to create this course. And, show, and while I do that, show it to the faculty. So I've got something to demonstrate. Okay. So yeah. I showed it to a couple of students and they, mm -hmm. uh, one that has an incomplete, they would like to do use this now because he saw it versus the old way. Yeah. So he was in the old system last uh -huh. year. So it's interesting. So I think it's I think it's a good idea so far. Yeah, that's good. So, so talked about what we are Yeah. Um, um I switched to, from old blackboard to, to new the new blackboard. blackboard. Okay, good. And then, um, I created six weeks, it's a summer summer course. Uh -huh. So six weeks I decide topics and some reading materials, discussion questions. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I'm working on adding more activities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we, we discussed uh, probably adding some debates. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. how it will go online. Yeah. Course, but yeah. Yeah. And you can do it with VoiceThread or with discussion board or uh, yeah. No, I need to develop writing. The rubrics. Writing. Yeah. So that's what I need to do. Right now. Yeah. And I feel more comfortable with the written. Uh huh. Spoke. Yeah. Spoken. Spoken. Yeah. Verbal. Yeah. That's good. Well, what I'm gonna do? I was gonna start the presentation, but I think I'm going to let Vicky start um, because since you have like people coming later, um, I think that would be better if we, if you just um, start like teaching them. Are you familiar, you know, creating tests and doing the batch insert on Blackboard? I no. Once. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, th it's good then. Okay. So, Vicky Verley is our distance education coordinator, and she's going to talk about practicing, and she's awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my introduction for you. Um, can I open a new tab here? The new one in there. Yeah, you have the new logo. Right there. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> like the torch. <laughs> the torch. If your email address and send you all of these samples. Because the ones on the exam loading, you may need it. I'm going to start with proctoring. This semester is different. Than Sorry, I forgot. It has been in past semesters. Uh, we proctor all day on Tuesday from 9 to 4, but you do need an appointment and not at lunch. 
unless it's just an emergency. And Wednesday evening. And that's different because it used to just be Friday morning and Thursday afternoon. So we put it together and make it all day. And if you're giving an exam, say you've got Art 101, in 01, and you're going to give the exam on Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you've got students that can't be here, they've got all online classes, they're working, then they can come to me and we can proctor it. We'll use that Wednesday evening and proctor it then for you. It, this is only the online classes, so. And you offer it first, and then I'm the backup. If this person's living in Indianapolis, they want to take the test up there, it's not a problem. Oops. This is the form that you're going to let me know that somebody's coming in to take the exam. And this is online, there's just a link. You're going to fill out the top part and then down on the bottom, when can they take the test? Are there any special things that I need to know? Uh, can they use a calculator? Is it a certain kind of calculator? Just anything that I would possibly need to know. And then you send me this. Then you send me the exam. If this person's going to take the exam in Indianapolis, say, I send these instructions with the exam so they know when to give it. Can they use the book? Any, you know, any other special things that they want to know. And then they send it back to me. If it's a 50 question multiple choice, I've got a paper that's numbered 1 to 50 and they put their answers on that. Then when I get it, I'll move it over to a Scantron if you're grading them that way. And then return it to you so you've got the original, the exam, and the answer sheet in the Scantron. The student fills out a form like this where they've got they're going to put their name and their address and what course it is that they're needing this proctor for then they're going to fill out the proctor's name where they are their number their email and the proctor signs it down here that they're not related in any way they're not the student's boss where they work they send it back to me and then I check on them um, public library, the librarian can do this. I either email or phone and check to make sure it's a valid proctoring place. Um, I've only had problems, in, let's see, in nine years I've had one that was a problem. And we no longer let one of the schools in Newburgh Proctor. <laughs> I won't go into which one, but they actually got the test and gave it to the student's mother to give to the student at home with her boyfriend sitting there doing the test together. So needless to say, they didn't pass that class. Yeah. yeah. So I check on them, make sure, you know, I'll call them. And if an email doesn't look right, you know, they can't use a Yahoo email for a proctor. It's got to be, if it's a business, it's got to be the business email. Or at school, it's got to be the school email. Um, gets a little strange in the summer when they say, well, I'm not in school. Well, you've got access to the school email even if you're not in school. And where are you going to proctor since you're not in school? So I, you know, really get down to where they're going to be proctoring. Do you have any questions about proctoring? Nope. Okay, we'll go on to the fun one now.
when you want me to do to make an exam mm -hmm. for you I'll get there Okay, you can send me the exam email or on a flash drive. I need the question and the answer. The answer needs to be marked so I know and not just like a hundred questions and at the end here's all the hundred answers. It needs to be up where I can work on it because I have to transform this into this multiple choice and the carrot then the question and then here's the A and here's the B and I mark the B as the answer if there is an extra space anywhere in here it won't work if there's a space after the carrot it won't work so I have to go in and take out all of the formatting when you send me an exam. So once I get it to this point, you know, see these aren't even numbered, so it doesn't matter if yours are numbered either. I take this And I go to this site and it's New York Institute of Technology. I don't know why we can't do this but when I take this your exam and run it as a text file and I get it back as a text file it won't work but if I run it through their converter it works so we're using theirs they don't seem to care I've got to mark each one of your tests with like an MC and a carrot or MA multiple answer or ESS like this then and you can do this as well. I'll send you all this information. It goes in right here. You paste all of the information, the exam there. And at the very bottom, convert to Blackboard load file. Okay, when you get that, if you open it and look at it, it's a text file and everything is in one line that runs like four miles, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know why our text won't work, but it does something to it that we just can't do. Even with a new blackboard, it won't, it won't work without running it through that. I haven't tried just running it through a regular, our regular text and then uploading it. I'll try it but I doubt it. On this page at the top is a sample exam with instructions on how to do all of this.
and this is just what I've shown you. You've got to have the question and then the answer with the answers marked and they go through each kind of question. You can only have one space between here and this all has to be single spaced. Like if, if this was another question, this one wouldn't work because there's more than one space there. Okay, this next little bit is just explaining like when you get into Blackboard and it says do you want your exam to load all at once or one at a time, all of this is an explanation of every one of those different things that you're, it's going to ask you. If you say all at once, they can see all 50 questions. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not. Nothing is preventing them from hitting print. Or screen capture. Screen capture and get all 50 of them. I would suggest one at a time. They see the question, they have to answer, then they have to save, and the next question opens. It just depends on what you're doing with it. They could still go one more. Yeah, they'd have to do it 50 times. This is supposed to be proctored, so that can't really happen. Well, if they're if you're using a proctor, and if you're using a proctor, and they come in here to take the exam, I've got software up here that I can watch every one of the screens, and I know what they're doing. If they go down to the bottom and open up another browser and go into Google. I see it, and I've walked over it. Uh huh. From right up there. Is anybody planning on doing tests with that proctor? I'd love to see how you would do. It depends on what the exam. With that proctor? I don't proctor mine. So you can sit at home and do it with three people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on what the course is, what you want them to learn out of it. Are they going to learn just as much as they sat three people together discussing everything and talking about it and then putting the answers in yeah. or answering one person? Short of, short of proctoring, there are a lot of things that students can do yeah. to get around. But all you have to do is say, how high do I want to set the hurdle? Mm -hmm. I personally, I just randomize my questions and randomize the answers. And you can get three or four or five people sitting around and they're all trying to take the test and they all get their questions in different orders. And if you've got a time limited test, for them yeah. to get through and sort through all that and answer it together is practically impossible mm -hmm. if you randomize the questions. Right. That, and, and so is that a perfect way? No. But the hurdle is set awfully high when you do yeah. that. And if you got a 50 question or 75 question exam, you know, and you and, and you you can get 10 people sitting around, and they're still going to have 10 different orders shuffled, and it's difficult for them to do anything dramatic. Do you have a problem with the time, the time limit? Because I know someone who did a times test and. People got kicked out, and then they, it was all kind of... You, you, you've got a choice. You can either have them at the end of the, at the time limit to kick them out, or you can allow them to go over, and you can, it will report to you how long they went over. And if they went over five or ten minutes, I don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. But if I see somebody went over two or three hours, now we're going to have a discussion. Right. So you don't have a time that it kicks them out? No, I, have a, just, um, I just get a recording of how long they're, how much they went over. Yeah, and and the way it comes up in grade book is it comes up that that has to be graded. Mm -hmm. So you have to go in and look at it and it's got a message there in red that says this person went over the, te the time limit by this many minutes. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and if it's 10 or 15 minutes, I, you know, we get people to, we, don't kick out of the class or the classroom, right? Let them finish yeah. up their work. Yeah. And so that's that's what you're doing. It's the same philosophy. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I, I, I just, I just stop fighting the battle. Yeah. And just like I said, try to make the hurdle as high as I can. And, and the way you phrase the questions too, because if it's something that they need to analyze, then it's harder to achieve because you know, every, you would know if someone you know does the same as the other person. If it's more like an analytical question, then that that is better because mm -hmm. I mean they can achieve more. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, that's just the philosophy that I've taken. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it depends on the class right. of, you know, what, if it's a math class, you've got a right answer or a wrong answer. Mm -hmm. If it's an education class, it may be your view on how I handle the, Philosophy. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, to me, if they are all essay questions, education class, I don't care if you work together. Right. Because you're going to learn from that sitting there talking back and forth and arguing with it is this the way you do it or is this the way you do it and they're learning. you know yeah they're learning so it just depends you know some you know history class you might get a little of that you know what really started this war or what you know something like that okay this is the the new blackboard <laughs> and I've been working on somebody's exams when you get this text file that I send you, like after I do all of that, I will send you the text file. Then you're going to upload it and set the timer and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So when you get it, you're going to go into Course Tools, all the way down at the bottom, Tests, Surveys, and Pools. and tests and then you're going to build a test you can put in the instructions right here or You know, if you want to think about it, you can wait till later. Any of these you can go back and do later. We're just going to go in with that. Okay? You can go in now, and I can make each question individually. You've got your choice of what you want to do. If it's multiple choice, put in your question, and down below, Here's each answer. Answer one, answer two, and if this is the correct answer, put your little radio button there. If that one's the correct answer. Then you hit submit. Probably won't do it. No. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go back after you get all the questions that you want if you're doing it one at a time then you can go back and put in uh, when you want them to take it the dates and the times and that would be over into a content area where you would have like exams and they can go in and click on that in this one, I believe I put them over here. Yeah. Exam one, exam two. And when they get the exam then, this is doing it all at one time. Shows each of the exams, each of the questions and the answers. And then they get to the bottom and they save and submit, save all answers. Now, let me go back over. T 
to the tests. Okay, we made this Art 101. You're going to go in and you're going to import your test. It's the file I sent you. You can save it on your desktop. You're going to import it, browse the computer. When you find it, then hit Submit. Then it's going to look like this. We'll go into Edit. Here's the question. The answers are right below and the right answer is marked on this one. If you need to change anything, here's question one. You can get the little arrow. You can delete the question, copy it, edit it. Go ahead and edit it because I assume that table was added like a JPEG or? Yes, I added the table after I made the exam. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Did you get the paper clip patch there? No. I just made the table in Excel and copied and pasted it. Pasted it right there in the window. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And the, I probably won't get to it, but the next test, I didn't make a table, I just put the information in and I copied and pasted that from the original exam. But if I tried to do that on and put it through that text file, it would move everything over and put it all in a w one row. So any kind of tables or anything that's strange, you can't run through that text. And I think in this exam there was like 20 tables. Maybe so... You, you can um, do a a, uh, a JPEG or something and paste it in there as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I do, uh, I do uh, use Jing and I, ca and I capture portions of the screen if I want to. Like a snipping tool. A, like a snipping mm -hmm. tool. And then save that as a JPEG and then you can copy that and paste it in there just the same way. Yeah. Yeah. You can do video recording too. Pardon? You can do screen recording too. Yeah. Like Jing. And you can make the, um, you can change the answers, change whichever one is right. You can also put in feedback. Mm -hmm. If they get a correct response, you want to say this. Uh huh. While you're talking about feedback, now, a while ago you said that you would convert a document test into this file for us. What, can you include feedback in that document test? Can you get feedback in there? The feedback has to be put in each individual question later on. Yes. Okay. And when you may have made all your changes, go in and submit. You can also go up here and it's got whoop, select all and you want every one of them to be two points. So when you make them, the default is 10 points. So you don't have to change each one as you're going. And hit update. And it changes them all and they're all two points each. Then you're going to go over here to your content. You're going to say you want to make an assess, make a test. You're going to pick which one you want and it'll show up in here. Then you're going to go in and I say I want to edit the test options. So here we go. Open test in new window. Yes or no. And the paper that I said I could send you goes through each of these options and tells you what it means for yes and what it means for no. Make a new announcement with this test. Do I allow multiple attempts? 
and you've got probably 10 or 15 different set the timer uh, you can put the test on and display it starting at a certain time and end at a certain time do you want it password Due dates. Uh, there on the due date is where I was talking about a while ago. Uh, down below the due date, it says, isn't that where it says, uh, but that's where it will either kick the student out or it will allow them to continue. That's up on the timer. Oh, yeah, that's. that's Auto submit offer on. The user is given the option to continue after the time expires or the test will save and submit automatically when the time expires. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's where that is. Mm -hmm. That allows them to come in at any time. No, that no. will allow them to continue taking the exam and then reports to you that they yeah, want to I mean, mind. 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the do. There's another option now. Do not allow students to study the test if they do it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> if, you, if it's due on April 15th, and they tried to take it April 16th. It says, do not allow students to start the test if the due date has passed. Even though it, it still shows up on their blackboard. We can't make it due April 15th. There's other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do, make it the day after. Right. Um, include this test in the gradebook score. I don't know really why you would want to hide it. But we talked about that. And it's, you know, it's a self-assessment. So if, if you just wanted to give a test, those students would, uh, like just for themselves, and you don't want it to count it as a grade, it's just for them to practice, oh, then that, okay. that would be uh, well, once you why check you that, that mark, once you check that mark, it's not going to go on the grade book. There's, there's no getting it back. You, uh -huh. you can't then change your mind later and say, oh, I really want to know what they said. So you check that. There's no getting that, those scores ever. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Show test results and feedback to students. Do you want them to see all the right answers after they take the test? Depends. Do you have them, it, are they going to be able to tell somebody else the answers that hasn't taken the test yet? What are the other choices when they do the pull down? Show the results and feedback. Well, this is abs after submission. Are there any choices there? Yeah. <coughs> one time view on a specific date after the due date after availability end date after attempts are graded mm -hmm. and that is new okay. yeah that's new word mm -hmm. yeah and that's the same seems like after you grade it would be the best right yeah. i would think Up or assuming you wouldn't ever have to be done you don't want to have it grades out and here's where you can put in to see the entire test or see one question at a time. Prohibit backtracking. Once they've answered it, they can't go back and change it. Randomize the questions. Does one question at a time, does that refresh the connection with Blackboard after each question? Or Yes. So that actually is going to be a better way to do it, keeping their connection line. If, if you don't want constant failures. Mm -hmm. okay. And so really it saves that way. Or what kind of test you have. If you have like 20 multiple choice questions, it probably won't be that big a deal. But if you have like five essay questions, then it's going to be a huge deal. I think probably going to take them a little time to answer these essay questions. Or if you got 75 or 80 multiple choice questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I've made a copy of how you're going to go in. We went into tests and we made the test and all of these all the way through where you put it on your content area and add an announcement, everything that we've just talked about. I've made it into a handout that if you want, I can email. We just get those in our blackboard. Online 
this course by yeah. account. Yeah, so and I have, uh, yeah, you can, you can email I can just me and I can send them to you, yeah. Because I haven't put anything for this week, so that would be something to put in there. Um, and I'm using the new Blackboard right now, and you should have access of the already to the, to the course. And they asked me earlier, Walter, how it has to be a text file that's uploaded for the exams. And I've been going into that New York Institute of Technology, running it through there, and then uploading that text file, and it takes it fine. We were wondering about the new one, whether just a regular text file would load. Without going through the New York Institute? Yeah. I doubt it. Yeah. I'll try it. I haven't tried it, but I'll try it and see. Are we not going to get respondents back? No. No. That is so friendly. And you can put the feedback in. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you know, those are things out of my control. Was that a budgetary consideration? Uh, I plead the fifth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so what we do is if they come in here, with you, you you give them a generic login, right? You see, now with managed desktop, the students can get to all their files. It's like open book. It's like open a lot of stuff. So I can lock down. Your login. I can lock down all these computers too. Can we do that through through the uh, plan school? Yes. Maybe I'll just ask you afterwards. But that's what I need to start doing. I've got it. It's too wide open now. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I can see everybody that's anything they're doing. Uh, my experience is with, uh, if they log in on their own, the landscape can't lock out uh, browsers. They can't keep it instead, they still work. But anyway. I don't know. Uh, I, w I almost want them to come in on a generic login. I've got that too. Yeah. Maybe that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. That would mm -hmm. be the best, and they don't have access to anything. And then, but I think the, the blocking out of the browsers works too. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to do. Yep. I might, I might start that tomorrow. I'll get two, two different classes. Mm -hmm. Well, do you guys have any questions? Any? Anything? Yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Yeah. Stop by or some, yeah. Can you submit a file through these type tests? Can't do that probably. Submit a file. I mean, you can answer multiple choice. You can an essay. I assume you're typing into a box. Oh. You can't attach a file, right? No, you can't in a in an exam. Then you're back to just submitting your assignment. Mm -hmm. I mean, to answer your question on a test, can you submit a file? Like, can you have a student submit a file? Yes, you can. Yeah, there should have question. a question. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I was just, if you were going through the whole Vicky uploads it or showed you how to upload it, obviously that's yeah. not going to work. Because she went over two ways of, of doing tests. Like one way is just, you know, one question, yeah. one by one. And then the other one is like the batch upload that is just, you know, yeah. the text file. Right. If it's a text file, then it won't do that type of question. But you can, after you that, do that one, you can add questions. And you can add, you know, a file. You would add an essay question. Student, yeah. Yes. Student submit a file. Yes. Right. There's if if depending on the type of question, if it's a multiple choice question, no, they can't. Yeah. But, but if it's an essay, essay yeah. they could actually attach a file on it. Yeah. Okay. You can explore all the type of questions. They're really nice. There's like one that is like hotspot, and you put a picture, and they need to click on the spot where where I don't know if it's like a math problem, like with a curve, like where yeah. would be x, you know, or like that. So it, you can be really creative with the, with the test. You can right now you can add you know YouTube videos, you can add pictures. So yeah, it doesn't have to be the traditional. Yeah, if you do it one at a time. If you do one at a time. Yeah. yeah. If you just send it to me and I do the whole thing. Yeah. Just straight multiple choice or straight true and false or yeah. short answers. Is all this new because of the new blackboard? Um, no. no. You could always do it. Yeah. No. Well not always, always, but at least for the previous yeah, two years. New York site. Yeah. Well, 
Are you going to send to all of us the information about the NYIT? And I'm going to give it all to Laura, and she's going to put it on your... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a module, she's going to create this on it. <laughs> Actually, I had a presentation thing prepared, but I don't think I'm going to have time. Uh, so I'm going to go over rubrics, but it's probably going to be just a, um, like a video that I'm going to do for you. I already have my slides, so, um, but yeah. If you go, I probably clicked on that too fast, but if you go in the question settings of your test and you hit uh, add image files, or web links to the answer. If you check mark that off, then students will be able to add any type of file to you, their test. But by design, that option is not available by default, but you can go into the question settings and change it. So that's the only thing about if you want a student to submit a paper. And question settings are just on your test canvas. You just see them right there question settings over to the side. So anyways, Laura, are you ready for me? Yes. You know Walter, he's the Blackboard Administrator, and he's going to be um, teaching you or going over how to set up the gradebook. And if you have, so I, I had planned for him to talk about, you know, respondents, but so apparently there's nothing to talk about. Well, but he's saying respond. It's not lockdown browser. That, okay. They're they're two different things. Okay. Walter knows what I'm talking yeah. about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I did want to say two things about uh, test. Mm -hmm. Like it's fine if you can edit this all you want. Once one student takes the test, don't edit it, please, because it will destroy your test. And you're going to call me and you're going to say, how can I get this back? And I'm going to say it's not possible. And so, and now if you read the fine print, it will say that you can change things like, oh, I guess I'd have to, I don't have any actual questions on this test. That's funny. It will say you can change things like, like in this area here, it will say the test will tell you you can change things like in this area right here, but I just prefer that, you know, you're not perfect. If you make a spelling mistake, it's okay. Again, you can make all the changes you want before you take the test, but if you make changes after you take the chance, especially if you change something like a point value or you add a question or you do anything like that, your test is going to be destroyed because Blackboard just freaks out when you do stuff like that. So please don't do any of that. The only thing I'm comfortable with you doing is maybe taking force completion off or something like that, but don't change the timer. Don't do any of that kind of funny stuff. Don't change it from all at once to one at a time because if a student's in the middle of a test, you're going to have all kinds of problems you don't want. And so that's just something I wanted to say. And the other thing I think I wanted to say really quickly was Vicky didn't really talk about this uh, this test uh, availability exceptions. Have you guys all heard about that? No, not everybody. Okay, I know a couple of you have, but uh, you say you have a student who uh, a meteor falls on their house <laughs> and they just can't take the test. And in the past, I would you call me and I'd say, oh, you're going to have to make a separate test and then you're going to have to subtract column A from column B and make a column C and that's how you're going to, you know, that's how you're going to solve this problem. Now you can just add a user to the group and you can pick which student it is. So say you have a student that never does their work on time and always is coming up with lies and stuff and you just want to be done with them. You just pick them. Of 
I've never actually not picked Laura for this example. She's going to be long gone from this university and I'm always going to pick her. And you can change it to whatever you want just for that one student. So you can give this one student unlimited attempts if you want to. And you know, of course, if I gave Laura unlimited attempts, I might be risking my job because the university might think that's funny. I can set her time to six hours. I can set her time to three days, you know, whatever I want to do. I can change her availability date and I can decide whether or not she wants forced completion. And I could set, set up different rules for different students. So if I was really particular about cheating, I could force every student to take the test at a different time. So that's just something new you can play with that you might not have seen. It's so. very useful if you've got a student with a disability where they have to have different right. testing requirements. Right, which is mainly probably what, what it's for. But it's much more funny to talk about a meteor falling on their house, <laughs> unless it actually happens. <laughs> it's not happened, but it's been. Right. It's been said. <laughs> okay. I have to be mindful that this mic is on, because sometimes I make jokes that probably shouldn't get recorded. So, okay. Anyways, what am I doing, Laura? Grade book? Yeah. Okay. How many of you use Blackboard for grading? You didn't raise what your what head. What do you mean by for grading? Like use the Blackboard grade book. I use it to record grades, but I don't let it do the calculations. Okay. Okay, so you've all seen grade book before. Okay, I just want to know, you know. Yeah, I use it all the time. All right. Okay, so you guys know how to get in here and stuff, right? So I'm going to show you some things you may or may not know. I think about the grade uh, book, most of this stuff, it has nothing to do with the new version of Blackboard, it's just that you probably don't use it. Uh, I'm assuming you guys all know how to create a column, right? You just hit the create a column button. It's very difficult to figure out, but let's say, um, let's say you have other type of problems like have you ever had a student's last name that begins with a Z and you could never find them in the grade book you ever had that uh, well a quick trick to that is you can sort the columns and now the first is the last and the person whose last name that starts with an A you won't be able to find them and of course if you want it to be funny you could say, okay, let's sort by smartest student to least smartest student, or you can just sort by any column in general. Now, let's say that a student is really, really bothering you, and you don't even want to look at their name. I don't know why you would do something like that. And let's say... You can hide them from your grade book. Now chances are you will never do this, but there might be a slim chance that you're going to have a student in your class and you're going to call me and you say, I see a student on my roster, but I don't see a student in my grade book. Well, how do we get that student back? Because they're now hidden. Anybody know how to get the student back? Column, manage column and organization. Well, you're close. Manage column and then row visibility and as you can't see because of the terrible overhead up here what do you guys think of that new logo never mind it's on camera I'm not I'm quiet about that <laughs> okay as you can see she is hidden because you know me and her got into a fight and I didn't get, or whatever she, she never turned in her grades on class but when it's time for your department chair to come look in the grade book, you can quickly go in here and you can show the row again, submit, and now she is back. So if that ever happens to you, that, that's how you get it back. Another thing that you may not know that you can do with the grade center is, have you guys ever used this thing called grading schemas? Am I even saying that right? Is that, is that word really schemas? 
Okay, so you click on that, you might have clicked on it before and you saw this and you're like, okay, that really makes no sense and you just probably left it alone, right? But actually, if you actually hover over here and hit this and then you hit edit, you can give it a new name and if I had a real mouse I could scroll down easily because <laughs> video gamers don't like trackpads you can't play games good with that but anyways you can actually define what is an A in your class so you can say you know what my class is exceptionally hard and 85 to 100 is going to be an A and then you can change all these grades as you want as you can see you can delete rows uh, I'm assuming you can add rows. Okay, yeah. Insert. I think that is really funny if that's how you insert rows. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's an insert row button up there somewhere. So you, I'll bet you just click on the arrow there yeah. and it inserts it where the arrow is. Right. Yeah, pro oh yeah, that's probably how it happens. As you can see, I've never actually used this, but neither have you, so we're even. <laughs> and so. If you want, you can change your letter grades. You can make it not an A plus. You can make it a C, a Z plus, or whatever. You can do whatever you want. You can delete all this, and you can say if you make less than an 85, you get an F in my class. So you can do whatever you want. So, but you can tra change your grading schema if you want to. And for some reason, I think everybody you, uses the same grading. We ought to just load it. One called USI letter, that's what I call mine. Uh -huh. yeah. I think we're all using the same breakdown. Yeah, but if also if you want to, you can add like five or six grading schemas if you want because you can create additional ones. I don't know why anybody would do that. The other one I understand because you want to grade on the curve or whatever, but that's just something you can do. Well, there's those few classes that have either pass or not, not, not pass or pass. Yeah, Walter, that's a suggestion. Can you folks load in a grading schema for all classes that would have the USI letter grades? Because we don't give B A minuses and B minuses and C minuses. If they had a schema in here that just automatically had the A, B plus B, C plus C. I will I will definitely look into it. That would that would be helpful for people. It's for, each, to that. it's for each class. So when you do it for one class you gotta turn around and you can't find your USI letter, that's what I'm calling mine. You can't find it again. So what is USI just has A plus and A? They don't give any, no, they no A plus. Oh, it's just A, B, C. A, B plus, B, C plus, C, D plus, D, or F. You no know. F plus? No F plus. No. <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I guess you'd feel real bad if, I mean, I can see not having an F minus. You know, <laughs> feel real bad. But an F plus was like, I didn't completely flunk. But that, that would be something you folks could add that would be yeah. helpful to people that might use that. We, we kind of have it on our, actually, we do have it all in our syllabus, except I added that a plus is added to B, C, or D for midpoint grades, like 85 is a D plus. But I had to add that to this one in our syllabus. Our syllabus just says, a ninety to hundred, you know what I mean? This is ABC. So you can do the final grade. Those it needs a little bit of work. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not bad, but it's crazy that you can't take it from you just did it to the other class. It's just, yeah, it's all fixed into that one class. Okay, I will definitely look I don't into that. Anybody can do anything different than what I just read? Out. Nobody does, right? It's a pretty much a standard. Okay. This one says start at ninety seven and eight. Or that was an A plus. Yeah, yeah. We probably should go to that, but that's a different dialogue. Okay. <laughs> that's not a university standard, though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, you see my grade book has nice, neat colors in it. I don't know why anybody would really want to use this, but I'll go ahead and show it to you. Uh, grading color codes. That is a new button and all that really allows you to do is say if it needs grading make the column purple. If it's in progress make the column another color and then I can add in ranges like 
if I wanted to know specifically, if I could wanted to fastly find by color coordination what assignment people got F so on, I could make a, a grading range for that. So, so color codes. I mean, play around with that. Let me know how you like it. Okay. Um, anybody want to see anything else in the grade book? You guys know how to rearrange your columns, right? You go to manage column organizations, right? And then you just change them around and, you know, in whatever order you want, you hit submit. And also, if you have hidden columns, this is where you, you would click it and then you would do the show high thing. Hopefully you guys have seen something like that before. Now I will, that reminds me, I should say this. Well, um, that's new that it adds the total. See the top? It used to not do the total. What do you mean it adds the total at the top? Where you just were. It used to give you all the points for everything, but it never said what the total was. Oh, okay. Uh, it said they added up by hand. A neat trick is if you click on the total column, if you click on the actual total column, it will give you the total points possible. Yeah, for the, for the whole, like all of them added up. Right, right. Or if you go individually columns, then it will just tell you what the total points possible is for that column. But if you click on the total column, it will tell you the uh, total for the whole thing. And I actually think it oh, did that before. Maybe I didn't look there. Yeah. Yeah, it's the most backward way of setting to seeing what the total points are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Question, and I'm not sure if you can answer this, and maybe someone else has had a better experience with it. How do you set it up when you're, let's say you have five quizzes, but you're going to drop the lowest score? Is there a technique for doing that in a way? What I've done, let's say the total value of the four quizzes is 200 points. Mm -hmm. There's five quiz grades that show up, so I make each one of them a value of 40. Right. And then at the end, once I drop the lowest score, it all balances out, but it confuses the students in the meantime because they think they're, they got the, you know, 42 points out of 40 when really this, the value of this quiz was 50. You see what I'm saying? We should write Blackboard about that because there is, there is, I mean, you could, are you exempting the grade after, afterwards? The lowest quiz score gets turned into a zero value. But it is exempt. It doesn't have a point value. Right. Well, so yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm just saying because you can you can leave the score in there and you can exempt it from the total column, but that that doesn't really help the students at all because it'll show up as zero out of forty. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Blackboard because that couldn't be done until all of the until all of the scores have been recorded. You can't make that decision. Right. Right, and see, that is, that 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 would be the difficult thing. Of course, you're better, you're better exporting it out and doing it with it in Excel. Yeah. You know, it would handle it. It's say take the max, or maybe I don't know, something like a max. But to answer your question, there's no good way to do it in Blackboard at this time. But I will write them and say, hey, you know what you guys didn't think of? <laughs> I bet they don't get that. Those are <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> you questions yeah. now? Yes. Well, and uh, when you export gradebooks, uh huh. Okay. Um, the headers across the top tell you what each of the either each column names are. Uh huh. In the new one, are you going to show the points possible in that column name? When you export the gradebook? Yeah. No. Well, it works the exact same way. Why not? <laughs> I didn't make it. I don't know. <laughs> the, re the reason I'm asking is, over in Kentucky, the blackboard, when you export grade gradebook, it shows you what the possible points were on each of the individual items. There's a setting that I think you folks can do that will make it do Let's that. try it. Let's try it. You're going to show us rubrics too, right? Are you, is that the plan? I was supposed to. We'll have time. It's only 4.18. And <laughs> Connell's asking me hard enough questions that I want to run anyway. <laughs> I'm so glad you talked great. I'm, so I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's been a bug.
bugaboo of mine for a long time. So I just don't see anywhere in here where it allows for that. What if it's the comments for the column? Maybe it's just in the comments. Include hidden includes columns and users that have been hidden from view. Now that's Look at the something top different. Of the, where it says full grade center, it says include columns, comments for this column. Maybe the total points. Well, let's try that. Right? It would be a comment. But it doesn't, I mean, it's not up, you know what I'm saying? It, it should be a global setting like up here, you know, but it's like acting like it's just going to. Normally we never see comments, actually. We have the name of it and then a comment right below it. And it's always down. Oh, yeah, I'm going to open it up right now. Yes, of course I want to open it now. Laura, get your computer fixed. Well, yeah, it's not registered. Okay, wrap, wrap your text in, in row one. In row one? Yeah, click out there on row one. Yeah. Click right there, up, up on row one. Just now click, no, click over at the where it says row one, number one for row one. Right here? Click right there. And now go up and click your wrap text, which is right under. I your, see it. There you go. Doesn't have it. It's not it, it brought in the comments, though, didn't it? Yeah, but those are just the comments. Or maybe those are just the titles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that 15 right there? What is that? Is that homework assignment worth 15 points? Oh. Well, see, those numbers are funny because that says three. I don't have anything worth three points. And the other one says 15, 16, or 27. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it has it. I, I will. Or are you writing all this stuff down? I need to check you in too, right? Because you know my memory's bad. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's <laughs> going up right now. Okay. This oh. is in an earlier service package. Let everybody see the rubrics, really. What? We're done with this. Everybody see the rubrics. The rubrics? Yeah, that's what you wanted to show. Yeah. Let's do 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you see it for a I thought you were going to use the computer, so I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay, so rubrics really quick. So, the way you create your rubrics, remember, like, every time you create a test or a rubric, you first of all, you know, create it in course tools, and then you deploy it wherever you want it to be in the content area. And then you make it available, uh, not with the rubrics, but with the test. You make it available. With the rubrics, you're going to associate it with an assignment. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. Antonina? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. So you're going to see rubrics here. So this is Walter's, um, let me see, I have mine open really quick okay so this is my blackboard can scroll down okay course tools rubrics okay so this is the way the rubric looks like, right? And remember that this are going to be the level of achievement. This is going to be the criteria that you're going to evaluate. And this is really important for students uh, because they need to know how they're going to be evaluated and they need to know what you are expecting from them. And it doesn't really matter um, what kind of assignment it is because some some people do justify that 
for instance, like a math question won't need a rubric or a math, you know, project. But it does because some some faculty do evaluate if you do the process right. Not if you you know you they will give you some points if you do the process and give you all the the full points if you have the process right and the answer right. So it really it really doesn't matter. It is good for students to know, um, and it's easier for you then to grade. So the way you do this, you're going to click create a rubric. You know, put the name of the rubric. So I don't know, math assignment. And description. You describe it. And this is just for you. It's not the student is not going to see this. And here is where you're going to uh, put the level of achievement and the criteria. This is by default like novice, competent, proficient, but you can change it. So you can make it, you know, uh, unsatisfactory. And you can make it good. And here's where you're actually going to describe what you mean by unsatisfactory, what you mean by good, what you mean by proficient or excellent, whatever you want to name it. And this is the criteria that you're going to be um, evaluating. So this, you can, if it's a paper, you can change it. It could be grammar. Here you can change it. It could be, um, you know, introduction, that they have an introduction on their paper. Um, you know, whatever you are actually going to be evaluating. Uh, you do need to write the description and the point value could be by percentage, percentage but it could be by points too and it also could be a range could be like you know proficient would be from four to five and good could be you know three to four I don't know so um, you know you play with that and total balance weight that is really nice because if you, for whatever reason, you want to add um, a column or you want to add a row, if you already have your points in here, when you do balance weight, it's going to do all the points for all the columns again for you, so you don't have to do that again. Okay, and then you click Submit. I don't know if it's actually going to do it. Okay. So this is how you create the rubrics and basically what you do when you design your course, you put all your rubrics in there and then you're going to associate it with an assignment. So if I go here, um, assignments and research paper and I'm going to build a research paper. So let's see assessment, assignment, blah, blah, blah and blah 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 and point value let's do 10 so you're going to add a rubric and from here you can actually create a new rubric so you that's another way of doing that you can create a rubric from there instead of going to control panel and creating the rubric but um, what you're going to do is to select the rubric that you just created right so let's do this one and then click submit and it's going to change the points according to what I put in the rubric, the point value that I assigned for each category. It's going to add it up and it's going to tell me, you know, points possible is going to be nine. Now here, um, this is very important because the reason why you do a rubric is because you want your students to see it. But by default, it, is, it doesn't let students see it. So you need to go here and say, yes, I want to show rubric with scores, or you want to say, yes, I want to show, show rubrics without score, whatever you want to do. Just, you know, make sure they see it. <laughs> uh, and then everything else is just, you know, the assignment setup. But that is how you include a rubric to an assignment, but you can also include it for a discussion board, you can also include it for uh, a journal, uh, a blog, um, a wiki, you know, so you can insert rubrics for for anything. And the good thing is that students, the first thing they see when they open the assignment right now, it's the rubric. So they can click on it and open it. So, yeah. So I think that's it. I did want to go um, over other things, but I'm going to do is just, um, you know, create a video because I don't think we have um, enough time, but 
Oh, I know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So I did wanted to talk a little bit more about assessment, but I guess um, that'll.